I started out, I mean, uh, prior to Newman, uh, I actually did have employment as an actor. <laughs> I had um, come recently to Los Angeles from uh, spending 15 years in New York where I'd been on Broadway and done uh, plays mostly. I, I wanted to be a, a theater actor, but after having a successful career as a theater actor and having no money whatsoever, I decided to come to uh, Los Angeles. Before I ever did a guest spot in Seinfeld and uh, played Putty, and um, I was really just bouncing around a lot doing guest spots on half hour shows. And uh, sometimes it you know turns into something, they want to bring it back, and sometimes, you know, that's it. But for the most part, when you do a half hour episode, I could jump it around, you know that you know, after the night it airs, it just falls into obscurity. So it was a, really a big uh, coup for me to, to get that spot. Before my first appearance on Seinfeld, I was, uh, you know, a journeyman actor making the rounds, doing guest star bits on, on every show on television, basically, doing dramas and, and comedies. And, uh, you know, I did some, I did some features and, and you, a couple series. They didn't last very long usual actor story you know you have your ups and downs and, but things were going well I was able to work uh, in my chosen profession for a living and I was I was very happy was out in Los Angeles doing somewhat marginally at best uh, when I uh, got the call to uh, come in and audition for Seinfeld uh, and I was excited about that audition because I had uh, I was a fan of the show and uh, and thought, well, here's a shot at getting on something that's actually good. <laughs> I started acting working in the theater. I worked in regional theater. I was uh, an apprentice at the Actors Theater of Louisville in Kentucky. And then I moved from there to New York when I started doing film. I worked on a film with Norman Jewison called In Country. And uh, I came out to Los Angeles for pilot season to visit for two weeks. And the first day I was here, I fell down and I broke my foot. And the next day I met my husband. And I never went back to New York. The call for Seinfeld came in. And I was surprised because uh, Jerry was in the casting room when I went in. And, and the, he really wasn't that, that big a part, you know. And, but that was fine because you always wanted to work on Seinfeld. Seinfeld was the first multiple camera series I'd ever worked on. I think I'd done, you know, an episode of Matlock or something before that. Street, I had done a couple of commercials for Richard Donner, who's the big director now, he's a lovely guy. And he put me into a camel commercial and um, I made some money on it, you know, and I really appreciated that. I started as a dancer. My mom wanted me to go to Connecticut College to dance, but I didn't want to go there. I wanted to go to New York and start already. Uh, in the 50s in New York, I met James Dean. I was dancing on Milton Berle's show and places like that as a coochie dancer and things. Uh, I had a trio. We danced in Harlem. I joined amateur acting groups. And uh, I was very successful because every time I auditioned for anything funny, or wonderful, I got it. And I was doing Lola and Come Back Little Sheba. I think that was my favorite role. And I was discovered. <laughs> Being on The Sullivan Show uh, all those years, Anne and I, uh, we had some kind of a, a, you know, like people thought of us as Jerry and Ann, the, 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 the short guy and a tall girl. She was Irish, I was Jewish. Uh, uh, we, we, we battled, we, we, we did all kinds of stuff that uh, kept us going, and thank goodness uh, Sullivan himself, Ed, was who I never called Ed, uh, <laughs> he's still Mr. Sullivan, I gotta tell you, uh, was very sweet to us. He gave us these shots to be on the air and be out there. I decided to become an actor. That was the only thing I ever enjoyed doing that I remembered. So I became an actor. Went to New York, my folks had moved up to Boston while I was overseas, and uh, starved for about uh, eight years. From New York, Broadway, I came out here on a whim. Um, started in, like, in ALF for four years as playing Mrs. Akmanak, the next door neighbor, which I had so much fun doing. And my last year there, I auditioned for Jerry 
for Seinfeld and got it, so I'm a lucky girl. I, from there, I just haven't stopped. Uh, I've had droughts from time to time of a, you know, a month or two, and, but mostly I've been working. I was crowned the queen of commercials one year on uh, um, Good Morning America or one of those shows uh, because I had, like, one year I had 24 nationals. I was making a lot of money. I put all my three kids through college. I mean, it was just wonderful. And uh, <laughs> But uh, when I was on stage, everyone thought that uh, she just does commercials. But here they saw me on stage, and they saw that I could act. I was close to that uh, seven-decade seven, seven, seven decade mark, uh, and uh, things were not happening. And uh, one day I got a call from Tony Randall in New York. He wanted me to play in Three Men on a Horse. I said, yes. Three days later, they called me from California. He said, uh, my agent, they wanted me to come in as the father on Seinfeld. I said, what is Seinfeld? And in those days, I did mostly heavies. Light heavies, and heavy heavies, and uh, I must have got killed on television alone 200 times, 300 times, maybe. And I had to figure out different ways of dying. And I said, well, let's try it. Oh, now. You do everything to make it feel good, to make it fresh, to make it, you know, a new statement. I first started uh, uh, acting in New York, uh, early 60s, and uh, got involved in improvisational theater, um, The Compass, Second City, Premise, and uh, Around 1965, I started doing uh, guest shots on the Merv Griffin Show. All my life as a kid, I was really into physical comedy. When I was in high school, I used to walk, they had these little alcoves uh, to the rooms, and the doors would be open, and I would walk straight into the door and interrupt whatever class was in session, just so that I could get like a laugh. My agent, when he called and he said there was a possibility of doing a shot on the Seinfeld Show, I mean, because I'd been a fan. I went through the period of watching the show, and uh, if you recall, very early on, the ratings were disastrously low, and there was talk that the show was going to be canceled. And I thought, man, that's too bad, because that's a show I, I could see myself doing. I was always really into physical comedy. I used to act out uh, for my mom when I was four, and my brother's a 78-speed uh, album by um, Woody Guthrie. It was called Songs to Grow On, and I used to improvise all the different songs um, to make my mom laugh. And then she played piano, and we would, my brothers and I would dance around and um, act out these sort of operatic scenes to her classical piano playing. She played a lot of Chopin. My work as an actor had, uh, had been pretty, pretty fully fleshed by the time I'd, I'd done Seinfeld. I started in the soaps. Uh, I did Young and the Restless for a couple of years and uh, had a great time there. I moved on from that into a show called um, Marblehead Manor, which we did over at Paramount, which was the first time I worked with Michael Richards, as a matter of fact. And I did, uh, we did, I think, 19 episodes of that show. Inspiration for me was, besides the Stooges and the Marx Brothers, but in terms of physical comedy, um, all like the Chuck Jones and Bugs Bunny stuff from, from when I was a kid. I did the new Mission Impossible, again for Paramount. Um, a little bit thereafter. My father, Greg Morris, was in the original Mission Impossible, so for me it was a real fantastic experience. We shot that in Australia, so that was another amazing experience to go down there uh, to an exotic land and shoot this show that my father had made legendary. Uh, it was an honor for me. And then uh, I moved on to some other shows like The Love Boat, and, and uh, I've been just stomping all around this business, and, and then I was fortunate enough to come up uh, with, with Seinfeld. I started as a, uh, an actor. And then I started doing some stand-up in the 80s. And I um, would do the clubs in New York. And you would become a regular at a club. And the one that I became a regular at first was the comic strip, which was kind of the club that Jerry came out of in New York. So we had kind of passed each other. But he was kind of the graduating class in front of me. And he had moved out to LA. So when I moved out to LA, I think a lot of people thought I was a comedian trying to act. But I was actually an actor who had done some stand-up and then went back to acting. My acting career prior to Seinfeld, I sad. <laughs> no, um, I was, uh, you know, I'd done Second City in, uh, in Canada, and I'd done um, uh, stage theater up there, and I'd moved down here with my family, and uh, 
I was just a working actor, going from gig to gig. Had a couple of you know pilots and that never went anywhere, and uh, and then you know Seinfeld, sort of you know as one of the uh, ongoing auditions that an actor sort of uh, locks into. I don't think there's another TV series that you could name where the list of absolutely outstanding characters is so long. You, you, can't, you can't even begin to just say, well, it was a show about four people. It, it wasn't. I mean, they, they would have, it wouldn't have lasted so long at the level that it was at if it was just the four of us every week. There were some people coming in, hitting home runs on a very regular basis. We mentioned a lot of them al already. And uh, that was a great, great strength of the show. Mm -hmm.